This is the antlion, but most people don't really care about this version of the antlion because it's not very interesting. This is the adult antlion, and it's just kind of there. There's not that much that's interesting about it, but the larvae are what most people care about the antlion for because they're fascinating. This is the larval antlion, and already it's way more interesting than the adult. It looks like something out of fucking Dune or Star Wars or some shit. Look at those jaws. Look at that abdomen. Like, it's, it's a weird looking guy. Antlions do have a very wide distribution. They live in most areas of the world where there's suitable habitats, and you've probably seen where the larvae live without actually knowing what it is. This is where the larvae live. They live in these little kind of crater funnel things in like sandy and dirt soil areas, you know, and you've probably seen these before if you walk around looking at the ground, but maybe not knowing what it is. So this is the kind of trap and nest that the antlion lives in, and it uses it for its very interesting hunting mechanism. So antlion larvae are predatory. They do feed on other insects, and they do it by waiting in the bottom of their little funnel. Then when a bug walks by, sand is very slippery. It does not have a lot of structural integrity. So when a bug walks around the rim of that, it falls in because the sand, like, drags it down in, and then the antlion can attack. The bug falls into the trap there, the antlion attacks it, sucks out all its juices, and then kind of tosses the remains out of its hole. So this is an ant, you can kind of see it. Sometimes the ant very much does not want to be in the pit, so the ant lion has to throw sand at it to make it fall down, because the ant on its own is not really falling down into the pit, so the ant lion has to kind of toss sand grains at it, so it falls down within reach of the ant lion, where it can then shoot up out of the sand and grab it with those horrifyingly large pinchers, pull it in, suck out its insides, and then toss the corpse up out of its trap because you don't want leftovers and like garbage in your house. Let's watch this again. You can see the bug struggling to not fall into the pit. It doesn't work. It falls in. There comes the ant lion shooting out, grabs it, pulls it in to suck out the insides. Then when it's done, tosses it out. Get it out of there. We don't want that. So, yes, very interesting. Now, you may be thinking, wow, that is pretty, pretty neat. These guys must be invincible because they just eat everything that comes into their hole with those giant-ass pinchers. But there are a few things that prey on this scary-looking larva. This is the red chalcid wasp. It's a type of parasitoid wasp. I've talked about parasitoids on here before, but basically... Parasitoids lay their eggs in or on a different species, usually another insect or arthropod, like a caterpillar or a spider or something. The larvae hatch inside of the host and eat it from the inside out, and then they just go on their merry way when they've killed their host. That's the difference between parasitoids and parasites. Parasites don't kill their host, parasitoids do. So this red chalcid specifically, it tends to prey on antlion larvae. But the antlion larvae are a very dangerous one to prey on because they have such a good hunting mechanism, which doubles as a defense mechanism. If the wasp were to land in the hole and try to lay its eggs on the antlion larva, it would not go very well for the wasp because the antlion would just shoot out, grab it, and eat it. So it can't really get close enough to be able to directly lay its eggs onto the larva. This presents a problem because now the wasp has nowhere to lay its eggs, but, okay, and take this with a tiny grain of salt. I couldn't find very many internet resources on, or sources, sorry, on this, but my entomology professor last semester did tell the class about this. So this is just from him. I couldn't find really any internet sources about this. I didn't look for very long, but just hear me out. So what a couple different parasitoid species do when laying their eggs on a dangerous 
insect like the antlion larva, they are unable to lay their eggs on them directly, so what they do is they kind of airdrop them <laughs> like paratroopers. So the so instead of actually laying eggs directly on the host, they lay eggs somewhere else and then when the eggs hatch into tiny larva, the parent parasitoid wasp will pick up the larva, fly over the antlion burrow and just kind of drop them in. So the larva can the larva of the parasitoid wasp can then crawl down into the trap hopefully without notifying the antlion that they're there, or if they do attract the attention of the antlion, if there's enough of the larva that at least some of them will be able to reach the antlion and then start to parasitize it without the risk of the parent wasp getting eaten. So yeah, it's a little bit dangerous because there is still a chance that the antlion will just go out of the hole and grab the parent wasp as it's airdropping the larva down, but it is a little bit safer, and it's a good method of getting onto a host that is rather dangerous, and so most other species don't even attempt this, so it has its own entire niche with very little competition outside of its own species. So yeah, this is just an example of however scary and badass something is in nature, like the freaky ant lion larva, there's always something that can take it, such as the parasitoid wasp larva. So nothing is invincible in nature.